Velkommen til den 11. time, hvor vi i aften kan præsentere en af verdens største klassiske musikere netop nu. Vi får besøg af violinisten Hilary Hahn, som er et helt usædvanligt talent. Hun begyndte at spille violin som treårig, som 11-årig, der debuterede hun med et orkester for første gang. Og da hun var 17 år, skrev hun som den yngste klassiske musikstjerne nogensinde kontrakt med Sony Music. Time Magazine har udråbt hende til den bedste amerikanske yngre klassiske musiker. Og netop nu er hun aktuel med den her, hendes fortolkning af Sibelius og Sjønberg. I aften har hun fået tid til at komme forbi den 11. times studie. Den eneste betingelse var, at hun kunne få halvanden times opvarmning, inden hun skulle spille herinde. Det vil sige, at vi måtte ikke forstyrre, og jeg kommer ikke til at tale med hende, før hun har spillet. Så i stedet for snak skal vi starte med at opleve Hilary Hahn.
Helt imponerende spillede Hilary Hahn i Saja, anden sats af sonate nummer 5. Welcome to the uh, 11th hour. Thank you. Um, nice to be here. You have to you have to imagine the applause from the viewers. Uh, did, okay. Did you notice that uh, this cameraman went down on his knees while you were playing? No, but okay. that's very impressive. <laughs> you did. <laughs> that's flattering. Thank you. <laughs> You needed one and a half hour to, to warm up before playing? Yeah, usually before a concert or a performance, I like to have enough time to be able to settle into the mentality of performing and to be able to warm up and do makeup and hair and get dressed and then play some more. Yeah, we've, we've had uh, rock musicians, all kinds of, of uh, uh, stars in this show. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anyone focus that much hmm. on playing their instrument. Well, it is, it's kind of creative to perform. Um, yeah. I need to be in a certain sort of calm mindset to be able to come up with new ideas for interpretation. Because a lot of people think that a piece of classical music will sound the same because the notes are all the same and there's no improvisation in it. But actually, um, in the moment, we're improvising things that are very abstract. And it's almost like an actor. If you give an actor a line of Shakespeare and then um, you give it to another actor, the same line, it'll sound completely different. So that's what classical musicians do um, when they're on stage. And it requires a lot of focus. But it's also athletic to play, so you have to be warmed up. <laughs> and I've noticed you don't leave your uh, violin out of sight. No, at I any don't. Time? <laughs> no. Okay. It's not that I'm paranoid, it's just that I'd feel really stupid if something preventable happened. Like, um, there are stories of someone practicing, locking the room, going into the bathroom, coming back, and someone has come in and taken the violin while they were gone in the bathroom for one minute. So you just never know. So when you're in a hotel room and leave the hotel, what, what do you do with the instrument? I gauge it. If I feel safe leaving the instrument, um, I might leave it for half an hour or something if I need to go get food. If it's really cold outside and I can't take it outside because the violin being wood, natural ingredients, it adjusts to temperature so it's not too good to shock it. The rest of the time I'll leave it with a friend or I'll stay in the room and, and order pizza or something. <laughs> <laughs> so it has a babysitter? Yes, okay. babysitter. Uh, You, you have a, a, a home page where you, you write a lot, you have your, your diary there, and right. fans are really, uh, you know, you're communicating a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I noticed that on your home page you write about passing time in a hotel room. Yes. You tour almost... Almost all the time. Yeah, so you're in hotel rooms all right. the time. And, and, uh, and then in the summer I take a break, so that's, yeah. that's my rest. But yeah. the rest of the time it's but constant. You, but you write about, you know, things that serve the purpose of keeping yourself entertained when you're on your own. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you wrote that nothing is too ridiculous in the safety of your hotel room. It's true. It's not even like being home and a family member is going to walk in. You're just, you're completely on your own. So no one knows, no one cares, and you can do anything you like. <laughs> and As long as you don't burn the building down. Okay, yeah, but the same is actually what we are uh, practicing here in the 11th hour. Oh, okay. I mean, it, nothing, Except a lot of people are watching. <laughs> nothing is too ridiculous uh, in the safety of uh, my TV studio. Okay. So so let's go through some of the things you uh, you spending uh, time in, in hotel okay. rooms. Actually it's appropriate because late at night um, there's often nothing to do in a city you don't know and you're in a hotel in an area you're not familiar with so yeah. there's a lot of entertaining late at night when you're alone. Uh, you're writing what to do with your instrument when you're bored. Yes. And you say try playing it in weird positions? Yes. There are people that are famous for being able to play their instrument behind their back mm -hmm. or for playing it upside down. Actually, in the premiere of the Beethoven Violin Concerto, the 
the soloist entertain the audience by playing a tune upside down in his violin between movements and then proceeded with the Beethoven concerto. Yeah, but, but, but for, for you, what kind of... I can't do it. That's why it's a good thing to do when you're bored because it takes practice. Yeah, <laughs> but, but what could it be? Um, well, I actually, I have friends who can play the violin behind their back. So they'll, I like don't know Jimmy how the they do it. Yeah. yeah, kind of, I guess they hold it kind of like this. And you don't do play that. with your teeth like he did? No, although I love Jimi Hendrix, so I Or have seen that. set fire to the instrument? <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay. No and setting fire to the instrument. And then you, you write... But actually, sometimes I'll turn the bow backwards. So mm -hmm. instead of holding the bow like this, I'll hold it like this. Why? Because it changes the weight of the bow. So if I feel like my hand is um, falling into a habit pattern that's not good, sometimes, it, because the end you usually hold is heavy, and the end that's at the top is is very light. If you have something very heavy on the top, you have to work on your bow control. So, so that's it's not something just that you for can fun. do. No, it's not just for fun. A lot of students do it actually. But it's then practice. tell me about this because you also write <laughs> yes. spent time dressing up your instrument. Yeah, actually I have never dressed up my violin, but what I was talking about with babysitting the violin, leaving it with friends, I had a friend traveling with me because that's one way that I um, I stay in touch with my friends is bring them along on tours sometimes. And I wanted to go out and take a little walk, get a breath of fresh air, but she wanted to watch TV. So I said, okay, why don't you watch the violin too? And I came back and That's what I saw. Um, she dressed the violin up in the robe and the uh, towel. Actually, the, the violin. That's the violin case, the, yeah. The, the box of, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the case. case, yeah. And arranged the snacks from the mini bar next to it so it was all ready for a spa visit. Ah, uh, okay. See? There's the body and the arms and then the head with the towel on it, ready to have a pedicure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I and said, then, what have you done? And she said, don't you like it? <laughs> and then you so you could do anything, you know? You, 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 have, you say, Act the opposite of your normal self mm -hmm. while you're playing? Yeah. What does that mean? That's actually, it's a good exercise. It's kind of like a theatrical exercise for the stage. Um, there are a lot of people who fall into a habit pattern when they're playing of um, not knowing what their face is doing and not knowing what their body is doing. So um, that's not bad, but it's just good to be aware in case you're developing bad habits. And one way to, to get out of those habits is to do the opposite of what you normally do. But, but what is your typical expression when you play? Well, probably as you saw, I'm, I'm more focused. I don't tend to um, forget where I am on the stage or wander or anything like that. Some people accuse me of not being expressive enough yeah. with my face and everything when I play. So the opposite would be? Would be being kind of extreme, um, like moving around all over the place and <laughs> making faces and getting all caught up. Okay. Um, <laughs> And then you... But actually, it's harder for people who are used to doing a lot of motion to stop yeah. than it is for people who are used to not doing much to do more. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But a cure for boredom could also be recycle strings or hair mm -hmm. from the bow. Yeah, you inevitably have to change your strings every two weeks to two months, mm -hmm. depending on how strenuous you're playing. And actually, strings make really good bracelets. So I've braided my, my strings after I used them and made them into a bracelet, oh, okay. stuff like that. So you can recycle them by doing various things. You can make them into decorations for your violin case, like for the zipper. You can sort of weave it into something neat, tie okay. knots, <laughs> whatever you want. And bow hair I've never played with, but I'm sure that there's lots that you can do with bow hair too. Mm -hmm. um, stuff a pillow, I don't know. Then <laughs> uh, you write, play your instrument while Dancing, mm -hmm. standing on a chair on one foot, or hula hooping. Yeah, you can hula hoop while playing. It's very difficult. Um, I actually have. I, I hula hooped in a talent show while playing the violin. Oh, in a in an Italian TV show? No, actually, a talent show. Oh, um, okay. I, I thought you it said was weird. It was at a Japanese school. I was studying Japanese, and so I wasn't there as a musician. But they had a talent show, so I hula hooped and played the violin while a friend of mine pretended to be a samurai on a bicycle and knocked over a model um, enemy. Sounds great. Godzilla, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> it sounds like a great TV show, not as uh, it sounded, boring. It sounds as, like a, a Japanese TV uh, show, but, actually. But but I, I have this. Oh. Would you be able to hula hoop? Actually, in these clothes, I can't because I think it would fall would fall down. I can't keep a hula hoop up on satin. W why? Because because the clothes are slippery. I don't think I can hula hoop in these clothes. But? But you could hula hoop in yours. 
uh, yeah, I, I could. <laughs> I haven't done it since I was. Uh, Men's clothes are much better for hula hooping than women's dress clothes. Okay, why is that? That's just the fabric. It's not. Well, I think my tie fabric. would be in the way of. Uh, well, but you can get your okay, tie but, out but of the way. Would you, we could make a deal if you play, and you make the weirdest, crazy faces you, okay. you can do. Uh, then I'll hula hoop. That you'll hula hoop. Yeah. Okay. But you really have to do, you know, okay. the total opposite of what you do while you're playing. Uh, and I'll play music people aren't used to hearing me play either. What, what, what could that be? Um, actually, there's a bluegrass tune that I know. Bluegrass? Um, bluegrass, yeah. yeah That's American kind of a folk country. Music, uh, yeah, yeah. Instrumental music. And um, it was written by a friend of mine, so I could do that. Okay. Aha, yes. That's a good idea. <coughs> <laughs> <Okay>. Maybe. <laughs> so. Um, this chair swivels, so I can that, play and swivel. Yeah. It's, but w Should I start first? No. Can you just. In, in, Instruct me how, how I... Oh, yeah. Well, e there are two ways to hula hoop. You can either um, spin your hips like this. Yeah. Or you can just go back and forth. Depends what your body type is best for. Okay. So I, I think it will come naturally when just you start the music. You have to just swing it to get it started and then yeah, keep okay. going. Okay. Ready? Okay. It's actually fun. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, it's fun. We both got some exercise. But it will maybe look <laughs> stupid in uh, slow motion. Oh well, everyone is welcome to put it in slow motion and see what it looks like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Bravo! How thanks. long has it been since you hula hooped? Uh, uh, maybe thirty years. Wow. Yeah. It's impressive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, now back to normal, right? Where do we go from now? Um, actually, where do I travel from? No, travel no, I'll just ask, where do we go in, oh. in the show? I know yeah, it's kind of hard to, to go beyond. <laughs> <laughs> actually, is that a first? Actually, I, I... That's definitely a first for me. It is? I've never played bluegrass while moving all around, while someone on TV is is hula hooping, and I've never been on a Danish TV show, so no. it's all these, I don't know what to do. There so, are so you have many to write firsts. that in your diary on your homepage. Exactly. Page. Yeah. Actually, that's one thing I do in hotel rooms to, to pass time. I do a lot of writing. So okay. everything on my website, which is um, hillaryhan.com, is written by me, even the things that are kind of articles. Yeah. <laughs> I write it all myself. But to, 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 to totally wash away the, the, the silliness of this uh, TV show, <laughs> Uh, could you play, you know, I'm very into very sad, you know, mm -hmm. uh, music. Okay. It, it can't be sad enough for me. Okay. And well, sad is beautiful, actually. My, my first teacher told me the hardest thing to play is slow music. Yeah. So I and always think about it that way, and it's very difficult to communicate the most simple emotions. So yeah. it takes a lot of work. And uh, you're going to play Bach's uh, Sarah Band? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Oh, it's, it, well, I call it Saraband. It's from the second partita, which is in D minor. Yeah. Bebak. It's music that can make five-year-olds calm. So I think it's good yeah. for television. Okay. Yeah. There's something about yeah. Bach that just creates a real mood in the room. And no matter what's going on, it just changes everything. It calms it down. So. Great. Let's hear. Okay. Og det er altså Hilary Hahn, der spiller Bach's Sarabande fra partita i D-moll.
Hilary Hahn spillede Bach's Sarabande fra Partita i D moll. During the first piece, the, the cameraman went down on his knees. Mm -hmm. During this, all three of them started to, to cry. Aww, <laughs> that's sweet. I don't know yeah. how they could see the camera, though, if they were crying. So I no. hope the picture turned out okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, every night at the end of the show, uh, the guest is, you know, putting the viewers uh, into a good night's uh, sleep. Um, and you will end by playing a, a lullaby. Mm -hmm. And why this uh, tune? Well, this is actually the first piece that I ever learned. Um, my first lesson was how to bow on stage. And then I learned how to hold something under my, under my chin. And then I learned how to play this piece. Okay. And it didn't sound very nice when I learned it. But every time I look out in the audience now and I see a kid sitting there, um, I, I think back to the first piece that I played, and I realized that they all started where I started. So it's kind of a nice cycle. Okay. And it's called Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Oh, that's maybe the most common lullaby in yeah. America? Yeah. Well, I don't know about the most common in America, but it's certainly the most well-known piece among music students, because okay. I think everyone starts with it. Yeah. And Hilary Hahn, thank you for thank you. coming into the 11th hour. It was a pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, Sorry, I almost poked you there. No, it's fine. It's fine. But, uh, I mean, could you hula hop after you've changed from this dress and we can put it on our website? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Great. <laughs>